Hello! Today we're going to be talking about how to format your Blackboard content with accessibility in mind. We'll be doing this by using the content editor in Blackboard. To correctly format your content, we are creating what's called the hierarchy of headline importance. This is going to allow students to easily determine your information structure. So, um, in addition to this term, hierarchy of headline importance, you might also uh, hear it referred to as structure tags, heading structure, semantic structure. All of these things are referring to the same thing. Uh, it's just different nomenclature, but all referring to this correct way to add tagging to your information. Uh, I'm aware that all of this might just sound like a bunch of jargon right now, but structure, uh, structure tags are critical for assistive technology used for visual impairments, cognitive impairments, and learning disabilities such as dyslexia and ADHD. So uh, what we're talking about today benefits students who are using screen readers and other speech or text-to-speech technology. So I would really find with those learning disabilities that it can help uh, students really get rid of a lot of the visual noise uh, when they just listen to that content. So it really is helpful. Uh, so it's also important that we talk for a minute about how the assistive technology works. So understand a little bit more about uh, why we're doing what we're doing here today. So structure tags allow us to identify headings, bulleted and ordered lists, text emphasis, tables, and other variations in text. Um, assistive technology can navigate documents based on headings and hyperlinks. So that's why it's so important that we also make sure that we have these pieces properly formatted. Um, when we only use visual stylings like big bold text, we aren't including the necessary tagging structure for navigation purposes. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. And so with that, we're going to jump over to Blackboard. All right, so now we're over here in Blackboard and I'm going to go ahead and create a content item. All right, and uh, I just copied uh, my information from a Word document, so I'm going to paste it over here. And you'll see that I'm prompted with this message to paste formatting options, right? And uh, so what you'll always want to do when you're prompted with this is to remove formatting, right? Um, otherwise, it kind of becomes a big mess. And, um, and that's when you get, like, when you see things in Blackboard that have, like, the gray box behind the text, that's because we've copied and pasted and we haven't um, changed that, or we haven't removed that formatting. So this heading right here is actually what I'm going to put as uh, my the name of this content item. Um, and you can see I just have uh, some blocks of text here. Uh, so what I may find here is that I may need to do a couple of hard returns around some of these uh, things that I want to be my headings so that I don't accidentally apply the style uh, to more text than what I'm wanting. So, um, Anyway, so I, I did that. I've kind of prepped my stuff here. Another option, in case you are not prompted to um, remove formatting, sometimes I find that Blackboard is a little bit inconsistent and I can copy my stuff over and it doesn't give me that message. Um, I can highlight the text and then come over here and th that's what this little icon right here means is this text uh, remove formatting. And you can see that it did actually change that text. So for whatever reason, even though it said it was removing my formatting when I was copying it over, it obviously didn't, uh, it wasn't completely effective. And that's okay, because we can always change it this way. All right, so now I think I'm ready to start applying um, my, my formatting, my heading formatting to this document. Um, so what I'm gonna do is highlight this information here, because I want this to be a heading. And uh, what I'm not going to do is go over here first. And uh, these are what's referred to as the visual stylings, right? We can change the font here. We can uh, change the size. Instead, I'm going to go to this drop down, And this is our formatting menu. And you can see I have these three heading levels as options here. So I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, one of my, my heading levels. Um, and this one right here is also going to be a heading at that same level. 
Um, and this one I put in italics because I wanted this one to be a subheading, right? We're just going to say that this text uh, needs to be nested under poet training tools, right? These are complex image examples that are part of that. It's not really true, but for the sake of this example, we're going to go ahead and, and say that that's what I'm trying to do. So again, I want to go ahead and clear that formatting there, but uh, instead of clicking heading one, I'm going to do subheading one. Right, so now this information is properly nested um, under this piece. And, uh, and so now, if I did not like uh, what these headings looked like um, in Blackboard, I could highlight it and I could go up here. Now I could do the visual stylings. Um, but it is really important that, uh, that I apply those format, uh, make the, those formatting changes first. Um, that's really critical to what we're doing. Okay, so one of the things that can help you um, as you are applying the heading structure to your document is to think of your headings like a paper outline. Okay, so like, uh, like something you would see on an outline or a meeting agenda. Um, we don't want to skip any heading levels. So here, here's an example. You can see like in this particular document, there's two items that are at this subheading one level, and then we have another item nested beneath it. Um, and you can see this, we've got two items nested beneath this third subheading right here. Um, so that's how we need to think about our, uh, our content nesting when we're building out content items in Blackboard. Okay, and now that we're back over here in, uh, in Blackboard again in our content editor, um, I did just want to, to call your attention to a few things. So if you have been uh, studying heading structure, uh, you are aware that um, you may be aware that some of our best practices is uh, that we you can go basically six levels deep with our with your headings, right? More than that, and it just becomes too convoluted for people who are using assistive technology, or really for any students in your classes. Uh, it, it just gets a little bit too deep for people to follow. But what you may notice is that right here under headings, we only have three. And another thing I wanted to point out is that if you've uh, if you've been studying heading structure a little bit, um, you may know that it's pretty common, uh, commonly referred to as heading one, heading two, heading three. Um, so it's a little bit odd here that Blackboard is not using this that same nomenclature, right? Um, so I wanted to point out to you, I know not everybody does this, but if you click over here, so what you may see, what we put as like the top heading on the page, right here has been flagged as an H4, right? Which would be a heading four. Um, and that uh, seems like it's probably not correct, right? That might be your first instinct is that, oh, Blackboard is not um, correctly prioritizing my information. Um, but it's okay, it, it is correct, um, because we have to think about our content items within Blackboard, that these are nested within a larger page. So for instance, this, um, this title that I used right here for this content item, this is actually my H3. Um, so that's why this becomes an H4, and this other one uh, is then an H5. Um, so that's why you only see three different heading options here. You can't go more than three levels deep. It's because we're already so deep on the page. Um, so another thing I wanted to, um, to point out to you is that uh, this is a little bit deceptive within the content editor in Blackboard is that um, it looks like by default all my text is a size 14. It is not, however, because if I go and I do size 14, you can see that that actually really increased the font size quite a bit. I really prefer to start out uh, the you know, the regular normal text in a document as a size 14 because it really increases the readability. Um, our accessibility standards tell us that we just uh, need text that can be resized for users so that if low vision users are uh, navigating your content, they have the ability to increase the font size. You'll see the symbol of a little man right here. And you'll find that this is a, a symbol of digital accessibility. Uh, you'll find this uh, and lots of places. So what this does is it will actually uh, do an accessibility check for your document before you save and close. So it, it is really nice. So I highly encourage you to click that button before you save. 
Um, you can see right here I got this message that says I don't have any accessibility issues that have been detected. So I'm going to go ahead, submit my page, um, and you can see where I changed that text size, and then that was that default text size. All right, and so I just wanted to summarize a few of our main points here before we end this video. Um, the first is to uh, remove that text formatting as soon as you're copying and pasting information over. Um, you'll also want to use the formatting menu before you apply any of those visual stylings, right? Uh, so that goes to all of your, your headings. And, uh, and then you want to format your headings like you would on a paper outline or agenda. And finally, uh, please take a moment to run that accessibility checker before you save your work. All right, and that concludes our video today. Thank you so much for your time.